Roe v. Wade gave constitutional cover to the elective killing of unborn children in America, period. You think about the implications of that on the economy. We're all struggling here to, to cover the bases of Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and all the rest. If we had all those able-bodied workers in the economy, we wouldn't be going upside down and toppling over like this. Listen, the gentleman I will not yield. I will not. Roe was a terrible corruption of America's constitutional jurisprudence. We did a fantastic job on COVID. Uh, nobody knew. You know, I've been given tremendous credit for the economy, for the military, for foreign policy. The one thing I've never been given credit for was the job we did on COVID. We did a fantastic job with all of the uh, all of the medicines and all, if you look at Regeneron, all of the things that we did, we did a fantastic job. Have never been given the credit for that. And basically, I allowed the governors to do their states. And people like Henry McMaster, who was here yesterday, who, by the way, endorsed me, you know, he's the governor of South Carolina. Almost every politician in South Carolina endorsed me, which is a little bit tough for Nikki. But and while these extremists say they are motivated by the health and well being of women and children, in reality, they ignore the crisis of maternal mortality. The top 10 states with the highest rates of maternal mortality all have abortion bans. The hypocrisy abounds. And let us be clear about what they're up to. These extremists want to roll back the clock to a time before women were treated as full citizens. Wisconsin to the 1800s. Just look at what happened here. Coming after you strongly in the past few days, it's worked both ways, um, and you've come after her as well. She, she keeps bringing up your age lately. What do you say about that? Well, I think I'm a lot sharper than her. I would do this. I would sit down right now and take an aptitude test, and it would be my result against her result, and she's not going to win. She's not going to even come close to winning. Uh, in fact, when I heard the word cognitive, you know, I've taken two of them now. I took one with Doc Ronnie, who's now a fantastic, you know, White House doctor, and a fantastic uh, congressman from Texas, Admiral, the White House doctor, Jackson, Ronnie Jackson, and he's uh, now a great congressman from Texas. I took uh, one then, and I took one recently. I think the result was announced, and it was, I aced it twice, I aced it. But I would say that, you know, I've actually called for a cognitive test for anybody running for president, because I actually think that's a good idea. It would be nice to have an intelligent person be president. Uh, but... Uh, Kelly has two, I believe. So how do you see the race? One more thing that we have to recognize and address is under President Biden, the Department of Justice prosecuted criminals, prosecuted child predators, prosecuted terrorism. But today, under Joe Biden's Department of Justice, it prosecutes you, America, as it prosecutes Donald J. Trump and his team and all of his supporters. This should never happen in America, where people who were defending their free speech and were standing up for election integrity are being jailed and arrested right nearly. Now. So we can officially say the Biden-Harris campaign has dementia just like the president. They forgot to put him on the ballot and their voters are having to write it in. And he's losing. Joe Biden is losing the write-in here in New Hampshire. You can't well, say anything more pathetic than that. You can't make that up. Well, Jimmy Kimmel write about that tomorrow night on his, on his show. These are fake numbers. Nikki Haley does not have this much support. She's going to come out and claim that she's rising in the polls. All these fake news media people up here on this platform are going to claim that Nikki Haley is rising in the polls. It's a total, complete lie. Absolute lie. Tonight, Nikki Haley was defeated. The problem is she's going to be dumb enough and she's going to be a fake candidate and she's going to keep going and we're going to destroy her in South Carolina. It's going to be a, com a complete humiliation. I can't wait to see it happen. So I'm fired. And just a little note to Nikki. She's not going to win. She's not going to win. But if she did, she would be under investigation by those people in 15 minutes. And I could tell you five reasons why already. Not big reasons. A little stuff that she doesn't want to talk about. But she will be under investigation within minutes. And so would Ron have been, but he decided to get out. He decided to get out. Now, Vivek, I felt I should do this because I find in life you can't let people get away with bullshit, okay? You can't.
You just can't do that. And when I watched her in the fancy dress that probably wasn't so fancy come up, I said, what's she doing? We won. And she did the same thing last week, but he was much more angry about it than I was. I said, get up there and you let him know. And, and second, let me say this, Laura, if, if, if Nikki Haley was everything y'all are saying and Donald Trump is, she's a globalist and all that, he endorsed her uh, to lead the, America on the United Nations as a bastard. Was he wrong? No. Donald Trump well, was he, right he endorsed. Look, <laughs> he endorsed a lot of people that ended up, you know, obviously highly critical of him, and they've parted ways. Again, nothing personal, but just because he endorsed her, people endorse people all the time, and then they part ways. Sometimes they get back together. But that doesn't, I mean, you've no, been around this game a long time. You know how it goes. Right. Um, this is for him to sweep those first three states. It's pretty decisive. Last point. This is a democracy, a constitutional republic. We must respect the will of the people. Mm -hmm. And Nikki Haley can't become an election denier. She's been rejected. Mm -hmm. She can say tonight she came in second or you can say she came in last. Charlie. Trump on his victory tonight. He earned it. And I want to acknowledge that. Now you've all heard the chatter among the political class. They're falling all over themselves saying this race is over. Well, I have news for all of them. New Hampshire is first in the nation. It is not the last in the nation. This race is far from over. There are dozens of states left to go. And the next one is my sweet state of South Carolina. Did you ever think that she actually appointed you, Tim? <laughs> and think of it appointed and you're the senator of his state and she endorsed me you must really hate her <laughs> no it's uh, it's a shame it's I, a shame uh-oh i just love you no that's <laughs> that's why he's a great politician joe biden having helped save the auto industry said the nation bet on the american auto workers and won In 2015, when he was first running for president, Trump went even further. He said the concessions we took weren't enough. He wanted to do a rotation in the auto industry of the jobs in Michigan and the Midwest so union auto workers would be begging for their jobs back at lower pay. He wanted to put the race to the bottom on steroids to screw the American working class. By the way, the last guy said he's looking for, he's hoping for a recession. Because he does not want to be the next Herbert Hoover. He's already Herbert Hoover. He's the only president other than Herbert Hoover who lost jobs when he was president. Look, since I came to office, with your help, we've created 14 million new jobs. 14 million. 